hundreds of years, the pirates have ruled over the seven seas. And although those times may be gone, the treasure still remains. And today, we're going on a quest to find One-Eyed Gash's lost treasure, with riches as far as you can see. And it's not going to be easy. So that's why I brought you along with me. So batten the hatches and get ready, Kathleen. Ah! Looks like I've crashed me ship and washed ashore, but at least I still got me map. So let's see where we need to go. Looks like the shipwreck knocked me head loose and I can't seem to read this here map. So let's go see if my cabin boy Jace can help me decipher this here pirate code. A proper pirate needs supplies plenty, whether it be me blade for chopping, me map for mapping, or me ship for sailing. All sorts of pirate artifacts are being found, even dating back to ye old days, and are being displayed at the world's largest pirate museum in St. Augustine. Now that we're so close to the treasure, I'll send my two trusted crewmates to help explain more. Shiver me timbers, could it be? These are the markings of ye mystic crew. Words on the waters are they've moved to Tampa Bay as part of a festival with danger around every corner. Now you laddies go check that out. I think I've found something here. At last! I finally found it! Hey, if you want me treasure, you'll have to fight for it, man. If it's a fight you'll want, it'll be a fight you get. There's been one time in everyone's life where they believed to be a hero in a once-in-a-lifetime scenario. Well now, those dreams can come true with the invention of escape rooms. They put you and your friends in an unbelievable situation. And your job? To escape. This is Escapeology. Located in the heart of downtown Lakeland, Escapeology invites you to enter a room full of mysteries and puzzles. Your job is to piece together the clues to form an escape plan. The catch? You only have 60 minutes. This is Antidote, where you and your friends take on the role of scientists trying to stop a deadly virus from taking over the entire world. Welcome aboard the Budapest Express. In this room, you are a world-class detective trying to solve a murder of a fellow passenger. Can you crack the code? In this room, you are an FBI agent trying to take down the world's most ambitious cyber hacker. I have sealed the room, and in one hour, the FBI will trace my hatchet program back to this apartment. Last but not least, this war theme escape room is called Cuban Crisis. This one of a kind experience tests your skills as an undercover CIA agent trying to stop a nuclear war. Do you have what it takes to complete your mission and prevent a nuclear war? If you're interested in booking a room, you can visit www.escapology.com. Click the Book Now button where you'll be greeted by a list of rooms and times, as well as spots available, and the price of the room. If you're up to the challenge, come put your mind and skills to the test at Escapology today. Reporting for Ignition TV, I'm Hunter Noblet. Now, how do I get out of here? This is the graduation game. The goal? Well, to graduate. And how you do that is up to you, because there's levels to pass, skills to earn, points to score, and plenty of quests to fill your time. But if you're not scoring a diploma at the end of the game, then you're not winning. So let's play. The most important part about the game is leveling up, and there are four distinct levels. Freshman, Sophomore, Junior, and Senior. Throughout the game, you're going to need to complete certain missions in order to progress. For instance, you'll need math, science, 
history in English for sure. But you can customize your character by choosing certain missions such as band, auto mechanics, drafting, computer science, and TV production. Ultimately, your goal is to earn enough experience to pass each level and make it to the end of the game. But what makes video games so much more fun are quests. Activities that can take part in to help grow your character, earn your rewards, and earn you a higher score. Quests include being in clubs or after school activities such as chess team, debate team, pineapples do not belong on I, I just don't care what you think, man. Or an academic team. Or you can join a sport such as soccer, basketball, or football. For instance, I'm currently doing a TV production side quest called Video Awards, and so far, it's going pretty good. The graduation game might seem tough at first, but the more you play, the harder you try, and the better your abilities get, the easier it'll become. For instance, your skill trees might be low in punctuality, participation, and studying, but the more you work hard to be on time, participate in missions and quests, and commit key game elements to memory, the higher those skills will become. And higher skills will grant you access to AP and honors missions, which will definitely get you a higher score. What score, you may ask? Your GPA, of course. In the graduation game, your GPA is a calculation of your average success rate over all your missions and quests. The better you do on each individual mission, the higher your GPA. But be careful, because one failed mission could send that score plummeting. And you want this score to be as high as possible at the end of the game. More on that later. Finally, no game would be complete without challenges or boss fights, and this game is no exception. Throughout play, you'll find minor challenges such as assignments and quizzes, more difficult challenges like tests and midterms, and larger boss fights such as the FSA. Players can also choose to take on the ACT or SAT. Although these aren't required, unlocking those extra skills will definitely help you with the next game. Of course, every game is unique to each individual player with no two games being alike. Oh, and by the way, no cheat codes. Sorry, but if you want to win, you're going to have to work for it. But don't worry, because this game has a lot of rewards to offer. And of course, the main goal is to graduate, but you remember that GPA score I told you about? If that score is high enough, you may even be offered bonus levels such as scholarships or earn a season pass to college. However you choose to play, just make sure you take the game seriously, because the next game is a lot harder. Life. Good luck. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a brand new episode of Drivers Driving and Rides. And today we got three brand new contestants and we'll be asking them a series of questions and put them in a bunch of different scenarios on what they should do if they are behind the wheel. So let's kick off a brand new episode by introducing our three contestants. First, we have Yamil Sosa, a high school junior who's striving to get his driver's license. Up next, we have Elijah Whitaker, who's a brainiac on the track. Last but not least, we have Tori McClure, a high school senior who's had her driver's license for two years now. Now let's shift into gear and begin. First question, you're driving down the road and a terribly overplayed pop song comes on your Spotify. What do you do? I mean, I just pick up my phone and change the song. I would normally turn the music up to make people suffer. I would wait until I'm at a complete stop and then change the song on my phone. I'm sorry, you Mill and Tori, but you are incorrect. Elijah was correct because you should never look at your phone while driving on the road. Anything could happen in a blink of an eye. Question two. You're driving along on a rainy day and your car starts to hydroplane. What do you do? Oh yeah, I know this one. I pump the brakes. I would slam the brakes. I would pull the e-brake and start doing donuts, you feel me? I'm sorry, Elijah and Tori, but you are incorrect. Hydroplaning is a very dangerous situation and slamming your brakes or continuing to slide out could be the worst thing you could do. What you should do is pump your brakes until you regain control of your view. Question three. What should you do before you start up your car? Is this a trick question? I just turned the car on. I would just turn on some music. I would put my seatbelt on and check my mirrors. I'm sorry, you and Elijah, but you are incorrect. You should always put on your seatbelt and adjust your mirrors before you go on the road. Well, it seems all three of you are tied for first place, so let's head into our final round. You're driving down the road, and your friends are being loud and causing a distraction in the back seat. How do you go about solving this situation? I would swerve the car to get their attention. I'd kick them out of the car. I'd tell them to quiet down and let me focus on the road. You know, you are correct. It is very important to let your friends know if they're distracting you and tell them to calm down and remind them you are driving. And with the questions coming to a close, the results are in. The winner is Yamil Sosa. Congratulations on winning tonight's episode. 
And for those of you watching at home, I hope you enjoyed learning about the rules of the road. I'm your host, Hunter Noblet, and I'll see you on another edition of Drivers, Drive-Ins, and Rides. Just north of Tampa in Dade City, located at 27839 St. Joe Road, Tree Hoppers invites you out to experience one of the most thrilling activities here in Central Florida, zip lining. Good morning, Kathleen. I'm Hunter Noblet, and today we're going on an adventure. Right after you buy your ticket, they'll get you sized for your harness, take you out to a safety briefing, and show you how it works. And then, you're free to roam the trees. Tree Hoppers has eight different courses with the difficulties varying from an easy tree trek all the way up to daredevil status. And with this many courses, there's sure to be something that catches your eye. To say the least, the zip lining is challenging. If you're looking for a more adventurous activity, look no further. For just $56, you can buy tickets on-site or online at their website at www.treehoppers.com. And that gets you three hours through all eight courses and all 100 plus elements. Although Tree Hoppers has 15 different zip lines just for your enjoyment, that's not what they're all about. They also have 100 plus different elements, which are obstacles that can vary from tight ropes, plank walks, and much, much more. And after a long day of climbing, I finally made it to the hardest course here, Commando. Now that you've gotten a good look at tree hoppers, I hope that encourages you to get out, have fun, and run amok in the trees. I'm Hunter Noblet, reporting for Ignition TV.